Good morning, Rabbi Isai. We had a little trouble with YouTube the last few days. I don't know, hopefully it straightens itself out. Otherwise, we have to figure something out. The YouTube? Or the regular sc- The screen? It's on an angle, but okay. Looks better for you? Great. Today's Shear, sponsored Lili Nishmas. It's great to see the Yom Schwartz. Ah, that smile from the five nouns. Sponsored by Mordechai Sapanik. Sponsoring Zeich Nishmas, my great grandfather, my namesake, Harav Mordechai Ravin. Harav Mordechai Rav Aaron Zeich Tzadik Levroch. He was a direct descendant of the Baal Shem Tov. Zeich Tzadik Levroch. May be made with Yosh for the time of Shabbat and all of Klai Yisrael. May also be made with for me. Who carries his name? That I should find right. Shtuch bekarayv mamish. Amen. If you haven't had a chance yet to see the new and improved weekly newsletter, it's at the second edition. So Mordechai Zapaznik, he's in charge of the. He he donated his the the section for children. He gives it somewhere else, and he gave it to us. So Yishkoyach. That whole thing should be a way to get more people to learn Torah, to, to get us closer to one another. Today's year is sponsored by Dr. Alan Listhaus, in memory of Arzadi on his 83rd yard site, Aaron Hirsch ben Yisrael Yikovich, by his grandchildren, Beverly Fink. Dr. Here he goes again, remember? They're all doctors. Dr. Alan Listhaus, Dr. Michelle Nordlich, Dr. Cindy Dabrinsky. His neshama should have an aliyah. Amen. And by a friend this year, who I just found out was released from the hospital. For Shlema, for Yaakov Yehuda Ben Gittel, if you look down here from our statistician, he says like this today is Daf Tzadik Ches. According to Tosfos, I have a streak going 375 days. According to Rashi and Yol Bergman, only two days. On the bottom, he says he holds like Tosfos. So good. So we got a psak here. But there's an asterisk next to my <laughs> streak. Yavaldik. Ooh, so we have a few emails here. From Chaim Kessler from Baltimore, another Baltimorean. Shkoya for restarting the 8-minute dav. I was wondering lately why my 8-minute commute home from work seemed to be taking so much longer. Now I can use my time productively again. Keep up the good work. Chaim Kessler, Baltimore. Yoyli Elkan. If the wedding's in Lakewood, you're invited to stay at my house. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have read that. Maybe it wasn't meant to be read. Um, from Rebbe Liezer, from the Five Towns. First, Rebelli, Mazel Tov on your niece's engagement. Should be vite the good news in Gesund there. Second, sorry I didn't come through with today's water air of video. And third of all, Ice. I, I, I was looking for a better uh, translation, a Taich. Better Taich of Ice, he writes here. Symbolic connection. He holds, okay? The Seder. Since uh, YouTube cut out right when we were starting the Mishnah, we're like one line into the Mishnah, so we'll just take it on top from the beginning of the Mishnah. And if, yeah. Avada, it's one week to the Siyam next Sunday. Go ahead. Phil Kamiatsky is what is hosting in LA. Yeah. Bye right there. Yeah. And the uh Rabbi Jennifer Febra, it's all gonna happen by Avi Factor, and they have to give an answers by this Monday. Anyone who's in the RDS him. How many people came to see him last time? Uh, what was it? Sixty, seventy? Right? Wow, sixty seven people last time at RBS. So Avi Factor is once again hosting in in the uh, alley sort of it's an outdoor seum large screen uh, projector, etc. Okay, uh, the rest of the world, the New Yorkers, I think, just fell asleep, and uh, whatever, we'll fi- they'll have to figure it out. In Muncie, no, the- Muncie's not New York, okay? Mordechai, don't, don't worry about it. We're talking about Bar Park, Bar Park, and then and the five towns. Kids are they're making a macha because I'm not doing the night show. You know how it works. Zog the Heilig in Mishnah. Hoya Kareb Sefer Alay Skufa. Person was sitting on his stoop on this skufa, and we're going to see in the Gemara whether this is a Rosh a Karmelis, what is it? And the Sefer 
In those days, the Sefer was something like this. It fell out of his hand. But he's holding on to it. He's still holding on to it. In terms of the Eiraisa, when we're learning Misak the Shabbos, you have to do an Akira and an Hanacha. You have to lift something up and put something down. If you still remain, if still remains in your hand, there's no Hanacha. So what's the problem here? It's only the Rabbanon kind of question, since the rest of it fell out of your hand, it's rolling on the ground, if you bring it back to yourself, you might make a mistake next time and bring something back from Rosh Hashayach to Rosh Hashayach when it completely is out of your hand. But over here it's in your hand. What do you do? You roll it back up to you. So we're going to see in the Gemara that this rooftop, he's on the roof, same kind of idea but different. I, I just didn't have patience to print another picture, so ignore this wall on an angle that the Gemara is later going to talk But here's a guy on the rooftop, a nice picture, he's on the roof, he's reading from a Sefer, and it rolls down. Different idea because the top of a roof is Rosh Hashayachet. There's no, there's no argument that the top of a roof is Rosh Hashayachet. Bizigaga Sefer Miyoda. Few shitas here. If it didn't hit within ten tfachim of the ground, you you may bring it back to yourself, roll it up, bring it back. When it reached within ten tfachim of the ground, so that there shouldn't be a bazillion to the safer, so you show this part. You don't let anybody see the inside. It's less of a bazillion, you see the white. Rabbi Yudah Oimer, Afilu, Ein Mesuluk Min Aretz, Elo Kim Loi Machat, Goyle Loi Etz Loi. So we had the picture yesterday. Even if it's within one needle of the ground, you still have the right to bring it back to you. It has to be laying on the ground. Everything will be explained in the Gemara. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, here comes Rabbi Shimon. And remember Rabbi Shimon. Reb Shimon is all the way at the end of the Mishnah, and what does he say? Afilu ba'aretz atzmoi goyle lo yetzloi. Even if it's touching the ground, you still have the right to roll it up, bring it to you. Why? He explains, she'ein l'cha davar mishum shvus oimed b'fnei kisvei ha'kaidash. We're talking about an iser de Rabbanon, a gzeira de Rabbanon. Maybe one day you'll come to, if we allow you today, you might do it tomorrow, a gzeira de Rabbanon. But when it comes to bezayin of a sefer, we don't want a, a, a chash of a sefer to be on the ground. We're not talking about dafka sefer tire, any sefer. Gedusha sefer. It could be navi, it could be anything. So it's on the ground, the bazaar. We take away that iser the rabbanon. Rabbanon allow you, they, they didn't make xeris. They made xeris when it comes to baseball. They didn't make xeris when it comes to the sefer. Says the Gemara, Hayi skufa echidami. What are we talking about? If we're talking about that this stoop, this guy, going back to here, if this is a pure Rosh Hashayach, meaning it's four Tfachim by four Tfachim wide, and it's ten Tfachim tall, so you'll see why it's like this. Okay, but if it's a real Rosh Hashayach, a proper Rosh Hashayach, four by four, ten Tfachim tall, the Kam Rosh Hashayach, right in front is a Rosh Hashayach going by, and we're not concerned that it might fall out of your hand, you might come to take it, pick it up. Mani tapadav tzadik chesam dalif. Reb Shimini. So the first part of the Mishnah, if it's talking about Rosh Hashayach, and the Svar will be like Reb Shimon, like Reb Shimon said, at the last, the last, last line of the Mishnah, call Dover Shuhu, Mishum Shfus, and I'm even if they so if that's the case, if that's the pshat, the reason why if you're sitting on a stoop and it falls off from Rosh Hashayach, it's still in your hand, I'm allowed to roll it up because I'm not concerned when it comes to Kisvei Kodesh. Eim Seifa. So what about the second case? Rabbi Yehuda Oimeh, we're talking about if a person's on a roof and it falls off the roof. So the first case of the mission is talking about he's on a stoop, that goes according to Rabbi Shimon. Then there's a second case, the guy's on a rooftop, Rabbi Yehuda sticks his thing in that it says, as long as it's not touching the ground, I don't care, it could be within a millimeter of the ground, you could still roll it up. And then you have, for a second time around, Reb Shimon Oimer, I feel about it, so even if it's touching the ground, you can roll it up. The says that doesn't make so much sense. 
Reisha v'sefer Rabbi Shimon mitzi asa Rabbi Yehuda. The same person, Rabbi Shimon, is saying the same thing. And in between his thing, they, they, they put in Rabbi Yehuda. They should say, if it's uh, if it fell off a, a, a stoop and a roof, Rabbi Shimon says, why are you telling me, Rabbi Shimon, a sandwich? Rabbi Shimon in the beginning, Rabbi Shimon at the end, and Rabbi Yehuda in the middle. It doesn't work so well. So it's a question. So Rabbi Yehuda in... So Rabbi Yehuda says, we have no choice. Yes, okay, it's a little bit interesting. Typically, we don't do that. It doesn't flow so well. That's the pshat. So, just to make it a little easier, maybe, we go through the whole sugi in 10 seconds here. I'm going to put it on a platter for you. The case is, you're on your stoop, you're right in front of your house, and it falls off. Why? What are we talking about? According to Rabbi Shimon, Shvuz, that if this is the Rabbanon, we don't care because we're talking about Kisvei Kaidish. According to Rabba, we're talking about Iskufa Nidreses, meaning it's an Iskufa that people walk by. It's a stoop that's right there on 13th Avenue and people keep on going back and forth. If the safer falls out onto the floor, people are going to step on it. It's a problem. It's a special case. The third shot is, Abayi says we're talking about an iskufa that's not as tall as you thought. You thought it's 10 tfachim. No, it's a little less than 10 tfachim. And therefore, it's, it's a skufa that's a karmelis. That's what we're talking about here. And in that shot of Abayi, we have two pshatim. Either it's a very long karmelis, so he's going to remember by the time he gets to his house that he's in a karmelis. Or we hold mahalach ka'imed, that is, when a person is walking, he's actually, every time he puts his foot down on the ground, he, he takes a, a stop. In slow motion, he's stopping and he's standing, and that's what's going on here. So let's see it inside, and everything will be explained. I just wanted to give a background to what we're talking about here, so it's not too confusing. So the first shot we just did, and that is, <clears throat> we're talking about Kisvei Kaidish. Yudusha. So we don't have the Xero of the Rabbanon, he might come to carry it. Rabbi Omar, Hachabi Skufa, what is it? Two, four, six, eight lines from the top. Rabbi Omar, Hachabi Skufa, and it dresses as skin. We're talking about, it's in a place that there's many people going by. However, when it comes to a roof, we don't have this problem. There's no, there's no people that walk by the roof. Stoops, people walk by this particular stoop, people are walking by, and it's a special. Heter when it comes to Bizayan Kisvei Kodesh. Eisvei Abayo. Abayo doesn't like this. It says in a Brisa. And Rashi says, I have no idea what this Brisa is. But this Brisa seems to be very powerful that it changes the way the sugya works. Even La Halacha. Toich Arba Amo is Goyle If the Sefer rolls out and it rolls less than four Amos onto the ground, in other words, it keeps on rolling, like, you know, like those rolls of toilet paper that get out of hand. It kept on rolling, rolling, eight feet away from you. Then, if it's less than eight feet, less than four hours, Now, think about it. The Gemara is telling us something new that we didn't think about before. Here's a concern. What's, what's the difference if it went four hours, less than four hours over? Here's a new concern. Not that you might come to carry it. You might come to carry it four hours in Rosh Hashanah. That's the problem. You're going to go to the end of it and pick it up and start bringing it to your stoop. That's a different concern. So you have concern number one that you might go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Concern number two is you might carry four Amas. Two different concerns. It's the same idea. They both is to the Raisa to carry four Amas from Rosh Hashanah or to go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah also is to the Raisa. Mi Amas mi Skufan Idresis Askinon and if you're telling me that this is a problem of bizarre kisvei hakodesh, we're concerned people are going to step on it. Mali toy charba amos, mali chutz narba amos. So who cares what the iser the rice is? Uh oh, I forgot to close this window. Okay, so this window is also a problem. They're both problems. Okay. So what is the difference? What the pro, what the iser is? Iser number one, I might carry from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh I don't care. You know why? Because it's kisvei hakodesh. I'm not so worried. Problem number two, you might come to carry four Amis, all of a sudden I'm concerned. But it's Kisvei HaKadosh. I shouldn't be concerned. El Omar Bainu Pshat Tocha Biskufa Karmel Saskinon. The stoop is less than 10 fucking tall. 
We have stoops like that, only three, four steps up. You don't have ten tefachim. So, if it falls within four amas, the nafal omaisalei loyasi the chiyuv chatos shorele rabbanu. What happens if you go ahead and you bring it into your caramelus? Nothing. Chuslar ba'amos the maisalei osi the chiyuv chatos lo shorele rabbanu. However, if it goes further away from you, now you have another concern. So the concern number one that you're going to go from Rosh Hashanah Rabbim to Rosh Hashanah Yachid, we got rid of. We eliminated why? Because you're not in a Rosh Hashanah Yachid. You happen to be sitting on a caramel, it's on a stoop that's within ten tefachim of the, of the ground. In Mamela, that's not a it's a deraisa. Wor- what's the worst case scenario? Right now, to roll it up is only a gzera. Maybe, maybe what? Maybe you'll come to carry from Rosh Hashanah Rabbim to the caramelus. That's not a problem. That's only the rabbanon. However, if it's more than four amas away from you, that's it's the rice of carrying four amas in Rosh Hashanah. So I'll da- on that, I'll be makbed. Ask the Gemara, but wait a minute. Where's the stoop? The stoop leads into your house. The house is Rosh Hashanah. So you might carry it from, it fell onto the ground in Rosh Hashanah. You'll pick it up and bring it into your house. The Carmel's is only leading into your house. It doesn't stop you from going to your house. Every skufa has a Rosh Yeah, Okay, so this particular skufa happens to be a Carmelis. But in, in three inches from that skufa, it goes right into your Rosh Hashanah your house. You don't have a skufa in the middle of a Rosh Hashanah. A skufa is the stoop leading to your house. So how come I'm not concerned you might go into your house? The chitem, it's very gishmak. The chitem, and if you'll tell me, kivin the mafsek is Carmelis, less limbo. You know why? Because you're going from Rosh Hashanah you stop off in a Carmelis, and then you're going to go to Rosh Hashanah So the fact that you made a stop in, Rosh, in the Carmelis, you're not over anything. In order to be over the Ereiser from going from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, perhaps you have to go straight, direct. You can't do a stopover. And since your stopover was in a Carmelis, maybe you're not over. I'll prove to you that that's not true. Well, my Rovo, look at this. You smack a picture. <clears throat> the guy has a trick. He's walking in Rosh Hashanah, but he carries the book above his head. Now, above his head is more than 10 Tfachim. More than 10 Tfachim is a Makim Tur. You can carry in a Makim Tur. So he's walking in Rosh Hashanah, above his head. Ah, shouldn't be Chayv. So what did he do? He did an Akira. He lifted up the, the, the book in Rosh Hashanah. He placed the book down in the Rosh Hashanah, in the Rosh Hashanah. He did, he did a Akira and Hanacha. But in between his four Amas, sorry, he did a Akira in Rosh Hashanah, placed in Rosh Hashanah. But in between that, the whole walking was in the Himmel, it was in the Makam Ptur. And, and he had it pass by above him, Chayav. So Mela, by us also, don't be a tremendous chacham and say, "Oh, I'm going to go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to go from the from the from the from the big 13th Avenue into my house, which is Rosh Hashanah." But but since I'm going through a caramelis and a skufa that's less than 10 tefachim, I'm not going to be over anything. Why? Because I just went through a makom p'tur, so to speak, only the rabbanon and rishos. No, you see that even if you go into makom p'tur, the rice of makom p'tur, completely yichayev. Hachemayeskinon says the Gemara b'iskufa aruka has to be talking about a long iskufa. So, in Abaya, shot number one, he says the iskufa is a caramelist, but we have to explain that it's a caramelist that's very long. So what if it's long? mitkar. So he'll remember that he's carrying in a caramelist. It takes. A while to get to his house, he'll stop. That stopping is considered a rest stop. That's a real stop. It's a real pause in a Carmelis, and therefore it negates the Akira of the Rishus Rabbim. He lifts up in Rishus Rabbim, and in order to be over the Raisa, he puts it down in Rishus Yachid. But since he made a real stop in a Carmelis, so you no longer have the Akira 
in the Rishus Rabbim. No, okay, that's a little bit far to say. Oh, we're talking about a very long iskufa. No. It fell on the floor. You're going to pick it up. You're going to check it out. You're going to look at it. You're going to read from it. And then Melo, that's, that's a stop. So you're not stopping because it's, it's long. And you remember, you're stopping because you have a Kaddish Dika box. You want, to, you, you want to look into it. Maybe he's going to check it out in Rosh Hashanah. But that's the stop in Rosh Hashanah. But eventually he's just going to take it and go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Amani bin Azahi. So then we have to say the second shot right over here. Da'amar mahalach ka'im edami. So as he's walking past the Carmelis, he could be walking, he could be running, it doesn't matter. But every time he places his foot, and if you think about it, you, how do you walk? You place your foot, it doesn't slide, it stands still, and you lift your toes up. But whatever you're doing, you made a complete stop. Your body is not moving, your toes hit the ground and they stay there. That's staying there, yes, your knees are moving, the rest of your body is moving, but your foot is on the ground, solid on the ground, not moving. That not moving, according to Benazai, is a complete Hanacha. So what you did is you did a Nakira in Rosh Hashanah. You walked to the Carmelis, the Skufa that's less than 10 Tvachim. You walked. Yes, you were moving, but Benazai holds it's standing still. And then, therefore, you're not over any Dairaisa, even in case you might be going into your house, Rosh Hashanah, which you shouldn't, but just in case, you're not over Dairaisa because you made a complete stop, Halachic stop. In the Carmelis. Says the Gemara of Dilma Zariklu Mizrak. Maybe I'll take the Sefer and throw it. Now we know this Gemara already. We were, we were born with this Gemara. To us it's obvious, the answer. But it's because of this Gemara. Maybe you're going to take the Sefer and toss it. What's the big deal? Toss the Sefer. And therefore you'll be over. So the, you don't have Ben Azai, a pause. There's no pausing. There's no toes. You're throwing it from Rosh Hashanah into Rosh Hashanah. Ah. At the end of the day, even Ben Azav says that walking is considered pausing all the time. He, he admits that throwing, you're over. It's as if you went from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Here, you see? Barahava. Here we go. Ahava is probably a man, even though it's a very feminine name. We would think. And now we learned the other day that Ahava was a boy. It's not Barahava a woman. Fine. From here you see, you saw it. Tell us it's not a big chiddush. You need a Gemara to tell us this. You don't throw a Sefer. It's not proper to throw Sefarim. All right. Zog the Gemara. Do Chazara? Here, quick Chazara. We're talking about you're on a skufa, you're on a stoop. And you're allowed to roll up the safer. Why? One shot is according to Rib Shimon, Rabbi Yudah says the name of Rib Shimon, because it's Kisve Kaidash. Special dispensation for Kisve Kaidash, we're Makel. The whole, the whole problem is Xera, he might come to carry, it might fall completely out of his hand, he might pick it up. Not when it comes to Sifri Kaidash, we're not going to be guided because of the design of the Sfar. Second shot is Rabbo, that we're talking about a special case of a skuf on addresses. It's a stoop that many people walk by there, and since it'll be on the ground, there's a real reason to be concerned that people will step on the Sifri Kaidish, therefore we allow you to bring it in. And Abaya finally says, we're talking about the skufa, which is less than 10 Tvachim, and it's a Carmelis. Either the Pshat is that it's long, and therefore you will remember, we're not concerned that you might walk right by the Carmelis and go from Rishos Rabbim to Rishos Yachet, you'll remember in between. Or the pshat is, even if you don't remember, but just walking, according to Ben Azai, is considered mahal ka'imidami, it's as if you stopped still in the Carmelis. Since there's a Carmelis between the Rishos Rabbim and Rishos Yachet, it's as if you stopped there, and there's never an Isidai Raisa to walk from Rishos Rabbim to Rishos Yachet when there's a Carmelis in between. Hayakai Reb Reisha Gag, so it says in the Mishnah, he's on the rooftop, and where's the picture? He's in the middle of reading, and the safer fell out. And if it's less than tfach, less than if it came within ten tfachim of the ground, 
What is, he can't bring it back to him. He has to flip it over. As the Gemara, Umishari, you let to flip Sifir Tyrus, Batanya. Kaisi Svarim Tilun Mezuzah is a cipher. He has a big problem. All cipher, you can't write a whole Sifir Tyrus in one day. So you write a Sifir Tyrus, what do you do when you're done? For the day. You want to protect it. You don't want dust. You don't want flies, whatever it is, touching your ink. Do not flip it over. That is a bazillion. That's not nice to take a safer and flip it upside down. Ella, put a nice sheet over it, something. So how come by us, you're flipping? Flipping is not, it's not proper. Says the Gemara Hasam Efshar, Hacha Loi Efshar. Says Rashi, two lines from the bottom, She'en Loi Beged Lifros. He simply, it's a talking about a case. He doesn't have, he doesn't have a sheet. To go over it. Taisus says, if you look at the small Taisus, there's no reason for Rashi to say such a pshat. Why? Because for whatever reason, you're not allowed to bring your Sefer Torah home, and that is the Zigzera. So how in the world could you take a sheet out of your closet and cover the Sefer Torah? What if it falls out of your hand and you're going to go grab it? The whole reason I can't bring my Sefer Torah back and, and roll it up is because I might come to grab it if it falls out of my hand. So you're going to introduce a second object and that might fall out of your hand, and you might go get it. So there's no reason for, for Rashi to say, he doesn't have a beget. So we're talking about that he cannot bring a beget, for whatever the reason is. Rashi says he doesn't have one. So what should I do now? Well, it's not nice to flip a Sefer upside down, but it's worse to keep it regular, and people see it hanging, dangling the entire Shabbos. So in Mela, you should flip it, Upside down. And from here, the famous Shach says that when you finish learning, you should close your Sefer. And if you don't close your Sefer, he says, you'll forget your learning. And the Orch HaShulchan says, yeah, you'll forget your learning if you leave it over an extended amount of time. Not, not every, you know, there's people that they get up to go get a Sefer, they right away close the Sefer. Okay, Yesh Lahachmer maybe. Says the Gemara, Hoi Alek Sav, So you flip it over onto the other side so you see the white part of the parchment. What is the problem? Like we said, especially if you were with us for Shabbos, you know these halachas inside out. You need an akira, you need to lift something off the ground, and you need to put it back down on the ground. But if it's dangling off a roof, there's no hanacha. It never, it never rested anywhere. So roll it back to you. What's the problem? We're talking about a wall on an angle. So there is a hanacha. Halachically, that's considered it's resting. It's resting on an angle, on the angle part. So you're telling me that it's on an angle. So how do you explain the rest? Rebuther says, there's no problem. Bring it to yourself. Bring it, roll it up. Even if it's Dangling uh, one millimeter. But at the end of the day, if it's, ding- if it's only one, if it's on an angle, like, like Rava says, who cares if it's one millimeter off the ground? The ground is not important now. It's resting on a wall. Why? Because the wall is on, a, on an angle. If, if he let go of it, it wouldn't go anywhere, let's say. You don't even have to come out. But halachically, it's resting. So what are you telling me? Oh, but it's one millimeter off the ground. The ground is nothing here. That's not the Pshat in the Mishnah. We're turning to that Tzadik Ches, Omen Beis, also by Dr. Ellen's house, in memory of my mother, Shendel Bat Aaron Hirsch and Brocha, by Dr. Ellen's house, sponsored by the Austin and Tobias family, grandchildren, Lilian Shmizar Bobby, Zizabas Chaim. Bemed Varma Murim Bekoisom Shupa. When the wall is nice and straight, then you have the Shiloh. Then you have Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yudah agrees that if it's Meshupa, if it's on an angle, you're right. It's done. It's finished. It's resting. But what if it's not on an angle? And then... In parentheses over here, there's an aleph, you take out the two dots, it's not a new sugya, sorry, it's a continuation. 
Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, and on that Rabbi Yehuda says, Afilu ainu mesulik min aret. Forget the three fun. Typically we say love, and in a second we're going to see. He said, no. There's no love over here. It's not on the ground. It's not on the ground. You can roll it up. Why? The be'in on hanocha agabi mashu. Rabbi Yehuda holds, hanocha is something physical. You can't just say, oh, it's within three tfachim of the ground, and I have love, and it's as if it's touching the ground. No. It has to be on a physical ground. It has to be literally on something. So the Gemara says, oh, I love this. <laughs> One of the coolest lines in Shas. You say this, people think you're cool. I'm learning. So we had the sugya. What does it mean? Question of if something's flying over, over the ground, can we say that halachically the ground absorbed it, it's as if it landed. So, according to Rabbanon, it has to literally land on the ground. And Rava comes and says, There's no lovud. So what, Rava only said it according to Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda is the one that says that it must be touching the ground, ground. And three tfachim within the ground that the whole tire is full of lavad, lavad, lavad. When it comes to this halacha, there's no lavad. So who says this? Rabbi Yehuda. We don't really pass him like Rabbi Yehuda. Yachid. But, but he never even mentioned that a, there's an argument in Rabbanon. He said, he, t- he took it for granted in Shabbos. That if it's within three tfachim of the ground, there's no clue to commission on It's as if it didn't land. But that's only Rabbi Yehuda that says it didn't land. Others say it does land. It did land. It's within three tfachim. It's halacha l'moshim Sinai. Anything within three tfachim is as if it touches. Levi katanoi amar l'shmaida. What he just said it as if this. Says Gemara, Ela kula Rabbi Yehuda he. So there is no machlokes here. It's the whole thing is Rabbi Yehuda. Vechasuri mechzer vachagdani. So another chesuri. Once once we're fixing it up, let's fix it up completely. Bemed v'amamurim bekoisim meshuba. If it's on an angle, like Rava answers. Then it says if it's resting. But if it's not an angle, less than three tvachim, he could roll it up to himself. Rabbi Yehuda forget Rabbi Yehuda holds that it has to be touching my taima. He holds that if it's lit, even one millimeter off the ground, we don't say love it when it comes to anacha. And, but that's Shittas Rabbi Yehuda. Fine. We're holding by Mishnah. We got 10 minutes left. Okay, we got to slow down here. Yisrael Halper and Shalom Aleichem. How are you? And Ramosha earned stuff. Don't be, don't be shy. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to the club. How you doing? And <laughs> Daddy Kornbluth, I don't want to, whatever. I'm a little upset. I don't see your children anymore. You're not. We got to get these guys back. We got to get them back. What's going on here? And Hill, where are you, Hillel? Here? You're in Eretz Yisrael? You're over there? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You said, you said you're doing a, a seum in Los Angeles. I should have been paying attention. Sorry. Okay. Hillel, seum in Los Angeles. Where? You have a place there? You're going to hang out by your friend and do it by your friend? Okay, fine. Say that. Zog de Heilig Mishnah. Ziz shelefnei chaloin. Yeah. Ellie Dykeman is just pointing out, just, uh, which is, I, I think you're, you're saying this, but the walls of the house are still considered Rishon Sarapim, even though the house itself inside is the Rishon Sarapim. Oh. What you're saying? Oh, because here, very nice. And here, this will even emphasize what he's saying more. Check this out. This is a ledge that's part of the window, a windowsill that extends outside of the house. What is that? So since, like Eli just said, the whole house, the outside is like a Rosh Hashanah, but over here, this is part of the inside window. The ledge. The ledge, by the way, Rabbi Yisai, I might have mentioned this, but a tremendous thing. I think, maybe it's not even called a ledge, so I shouldn't even say this myself, but why not? You guys don't know. I think it's called, in Chicago, the, it was, used to be the tallest building in the United States, the Sears Tower, that was the Wilson Tower. So a from guy, my best friend in those days in Chicago, Moshe Epstein, he built by himself. Well, he didn't screw. He built the ledge. It's like the sky deck over 
It's like 90 floors. It's very, he took me there because he had the keys. Completely dark building. You walk into the Wilson Towers, took me up to the top, brought me onto the ledge at night. Unbelievable. The ledge. So if you have a ledge sticking out, I think it's called the ledge. Maybe it's called the sky deck. I don't know. Whatever. Let me show you. There's a ledge. This is, that is the ledge of the world. I mean, there's other ones now over Grand Canyon, whatever, but the ledge. You have a ledge that comes out of the window. It has to be 10 tefachim high and 4 tefachim wide, like a Rosh Hashanah. Nice to know love, v'nait to remember Shabbos. I could take things, put it on the ledge. I have a, a cup, put it on the ledge. Says the Gemara. Here, if you just want to see what a ledge looks like, here. We're going to use this picture soon, but here. Here's a window, here's your ledge. Says the Gemara, Haizis the Mabik Leicha. What's going on here? Ilayim the Mabik Lushus Harabim. It's over Lushus Harabim. What's going on here? Leichos Dimon Nafa Vazile Asuye. What if your object falls off the ledge? It's very normal for things to fall off ledges. And we have to be geyser. Elo the Mabik Lushus Ayachid. So you have to say no. I'm not geyser because it's over my backyard. Shalom Aleichem. It's over your backyard. What's the big deal? It goes from your house to your backyard. So. What's the what's the big chiddush of the mission? Pshita, Amar Abaye, of course. Lo oylam the mapik lushus harabim. I know it's the all of the ktani. Kela managed barim. Look at this beautiful picture, Yoni. If he puts glassware and it's going to fall down and break, there's no concern. You're not going to go get it. So enechanami, look what he did here. He he put a ladle here. I just colored it a little bit because it's black and white. He put a ladle and he. There's an X. A ladle will be also for you to put on the ledge. You have to make a distinction. If it's something that's not going to break, and it'll fall down, you'll go get it. You can't do that. It's a very important Yisoyed. Why? Based on this Yisoyed, here's a little bit of a trick question. Can you think of a reason, we said, oh, we always say, if you have a Makkah Pator, you have something that's less than 4 Tfachim by 4 Tfachim, Mil Vashusarabim, below 10 Tfachim, above 3 Tfachim, you'll add a Undo your bundle, put it on top of a, le- on a little beam in the middle of a You're allowed to use it. It's a makam tour. Can you think about a reason why, if you have a makam tour sticking out of your bedroom window, you're not allowed to put anything on it? It's a makam tour. Makam tour. What's the problem for me to put something on a makam tour? But based on this idea that we just said, we're very concerned that you're going to drop something off the ledge. Rashi says an amazing thing here. It's not that if you're going to drop something off the ledge, it's when you're going to drop something off the ledge. It's guaranteed you're going to drop something off the ledge. And if it's guaranteed that you're going to drop something off the ledge, it's as if you threw something off the ledge. That's what he says. Major chiddush here. So if that's the case, let's see what the Gemara says here. That explains the next few lines here. Tanya nami hachi. Ziz, we've learned a very similar brayso. Ziz shilifnei chaloi hachaloin. As typical, the Brisa adds a little bit on the Mishnah. There's a little ledge in front of the window. Hayoyi says the Shusharab and goes over the Shusharab. Nice and love Ka'arois. Look at this. If you notice the wording here, it's all things that are breakable. Ka'arois, Vikaisois, plates and, 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 and cups, Kitoniois, pitchers, and Sluchiois, flat. All things that are going to break. In other words, the only items I'm allowed to put on the ledge are breakable because if they do fall, Mordechai sells a Shalom Aleichem. I haven't seen you in three months. How you doing? So I'm not, I'm not concerned. Umishtamish bekal akhoisel. This ziz. Check it out. If this ledge goes from side to side, it continues, I could use it. Even if it's the whole length of the wall and nothing to do with my window. Ad asara tachtoinim. Unless it goes within ten tefachim to the ground. Oh. But what if there's two, two shelves? The guy has two shelves outside. A ledge and another ledge. Two ledges. Mishtamish boy, he could use the bottom one, like you see in this picture, the entire length of the wall. But in the upper one, Ein mishdamish boy elok keneged chaloyna. Tosis points out here that the the point is just to tell you that don't think that it's difficult to get to. Look, I have to reach over this ledge to get to the battle. No, you could still use a ledge because if if 
If there's only one ledge, I don't care where it is, next to the window, below the window, as long as it's not within 10 tefachim on the ground, I can use the ledge. So who cares if there's two or one? Says Tyson, there's, I would think there's, there's a difference. I can't get to it. So very interesting. If you look closely over here in the blue lines, the upper one, I'm limited to this area, to where the window stops and starts. I cannot use the extension, whereas the bottom one I can use the entire wall, and the top one I can't. Why? So the Gemara explains. What are we talking about? What kind of ledge? If it doesn't have four tfachim, then it's a makim turin, as we explained before. I don't know if you want to see Rashi, because we don't have that much time. Uh, I can't even tell you where it is. It's like six lines before it gets wide. Rashi says, The kalim are shchiach, they're going to fall into the rabbit. Oh, we said that it's kalim nishbarim. Aval hacha de Ruben Nafli, says Rashi. Most of them fall. Most. Merzi keman de shadi lehedi l'shus harabim. It's as if you're throwing it into l'shus harabim. That's what Rashi says. Okay. Viz be arba, ask the Gemara, what are we talking about? If this ledge is less than four tfachim, what's less than four tfachim called? A makam p'tu. V'afil neged chaloy noi nami lo yishtamish. So how is, he allowed to, how is he allowed to carry over here, according to what Rashi said? Because most of the time it's going to fall. And even, through, you hear the Chiddush, even breakable objects. I can't use, why? Because it looks like I'm throwing breakable objects. If it's Tashmishit to other, I'm always using it. Even breakable objects are awesome. And if it's for Tzvachim, why? Why is he limited to the blue line? He should be able to carry the entire length of this this ledge, Omar Bayo, Tachtin is Be'arba, Velian Let's Be'arba. Because the bottom one is very wide, it's Fort Fachim, so you could use the entire length. But the upper one doesn't have Fort Fachim. It has Fort Fachim with the actual windowsill that's within the house. Sorry. Kineged Chalonim Shtamesh, Velian Let's Be'arba, Velian Let's Be'arba. So therefore, Kineged Chalonim Shtamesh, that's why I could use only the area within the window, within the blue line. The Chayre Chalonu. Rashi, the, the Gemara calls it Chayre Chaloin. It's like the holes in a window, like we use the Lashon, Chayre Rishus Rabbim, like a hole in a wall. Daigisa, Daigisa, Asur. But this part and this part you cannot use. Why? Because it doesn't have four Tfachim. It's not four Tfachim wide. Says the Mishnah. And we had this Mishnah, we're very familiar with this, a number of times. Oymidadim Rishus Rayachid, Umetalta Bishus Rabbim. A person can stand inside one rishos and move an object in another rishos. And we're not concerned, says Rashi, that you might come and pick it up and bring it into your rishos. And now you're doing a real akira and ha'anacha. Akira of rishos ha'yachid, bring it to rishos ha'rabim. Akira of rishos ha'rabim, bring it to rishos ha'yachid. I'm not concerned. I'll move it. There's a kid here, look, great picture. Why is he doing it? Because he wants to bring the pail Move it in another rishus. His whole body is in rishus rabbim. He wants to get the kid a, a toy. Rishus rabbim tal rishus yachid and reverse. Don't move it more than four amos. Loi yamad adam rishus yachid v'yashne rishus rabbim. A person should not stand in one rishus in rishus yachid and relieve himself in rishus rabbim. Rishus rabbim v'yashne rishus yachid. Bar Hashem, I couldn't find a picture in Yoni for this. V'chein lo yaroik. But I did find the picture of this, of a guy spitting. Yeah. So you can imagine. He's standing over here, he's spitting into the Rosh Hashayachid. Rabbi Yudaimer, so you're not allowed to do so. Rabbi Yudaimer, Af Mishanit Lashruka Befiv, even once you dislodge the spittle in your mouth, Wow, that's a big one. So you're walking with Rishus Rabbim, and you have something going on, and you go, whatever, and you dislodge it. Now it's like ready to leave your mouth. So it's awesome for you to walk for Amos, because you're carrying within your mouth. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.
אם אבנו את זה שמונה גרד אלוהים יהיה מאוד. כי מוכרח סליחו, למען תבורי. כי ביצענו נגיד סלם שיב ולברוי רחום. כי Don't hear anybody. What's Pshat? Jay Spitzer, Shalom Aleichem from Toronto. How you doing? All right, St- hold, hold out, hold out. Forget, forget the, day, the night here. Hold it out. You'll, YouTube, yeah. Torah anytime. You'll get there. You'll get there. <laughs> What's going to be with football? Ah, uh, you guys in Toronto don't do football. Okay, fine. We're not choishes that you might. Okay, got it. I Uh, Mordechai Ashkenazi is every day, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, there's a bunch of guys. Yisrael Haber is probably now in Florida, I don't know, where are you Yisrael? In Florida, here. It's 1 o'clock in the morning, What's, uh, it's not a... Uh, Rabbi Tversky, Chicago, there's, who else is here? Yo, Lily, yo, Bergman. <laughs> yo, Bergman, Milamed, ala, uh, the guys from Chutz Laaretz. If he could do it, anybody could do it. It's not only Yoel, by the way. You know, Yoel Bergman, when he wakes up and watches the shir, his mother has to be right next to him. So it's the whole mishpach over there. It's a whole family affair. Hi, Yoel. How you doing? I'm not going to be there for the siyum, no. Bezer Hashem, no. It's better to be in Eretz Yisrael for a siyum. I promise you, you're not the only one. You know, he, but he has the ability, Mati, 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 he has the ability to make you feel like he's your best friend. He has that koyach. Thank you, thank you. Right, I was reading this about, uh, who, who was it? Somebody was just nifter. Like, every person felt that they're the best friend. Y'all has that koyach. Yeah, yeah. He's actually changed job. Oh. Yeah, and he spends half the time in America. He's just come back four weeks in the United States. Ooh. Around. Did he bring that coffee? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen. He's, I, he's working for one of the largest developers in Israel. They're building a fantastic development in Yerushalayim. Yeah. Doesn't he have doesn't he have a hard time now with the whole COVID, like getting into people's houses, schmoozing with them? Well, he was very much there. Yeah. He sold a number of apartments once there. Wow. He came back here uh, two to three days ago, and now he's in good in Israel. So he he must love Biden. He loves Biden. Biden probably sh- real estate in our show is going up like crazy now. Everybody wants to run away. Wow, wow. But you know, Daddy Kormluth, Daddy Kormluth, you got to tell him, even when he has these jobs, he has to pop in once in a while. We literally haven't, he was the, he was the main guy walking around 